I would like to thank all of you speakers and uh, attendees for coming. Uh, it has been really, really a lovely meeting. Thank you very much. So actually everything else was mentioned by all of you. <laughs> so I don't know what to say else here. So I'll go through very, very quickly through a couple of minutes through the upper lid blepharoplasty uh, complication. I have no financial interest and this is very uh, beautiful pictures of Serbanias and another one at night time, uh, our beautiful UAE. So uh, again, I have some couple of complications and some pitfalls actually, which may not be a complication and sometimes you're not happy though patient may not, may not notice as uh, Dr. Allen mentioned. So there are loads of complications we can talk about and we'll go through some of them. Now why these complications happen is because it's either because of the surgeon or because of the patient and anything else related to them. It's because of your judgment, your assessment, your surgical technique, your experience. How do you instruct your patients uh, after the operation? And what was your indication for the surgery? Patient-wise, again, expectation, you know, how they react to the wound and so on. Post-operative care, where do they go? Our patients, elderly, they may go to the, to the farm with the cattle or with the, uh, with the, with the camel. You have to mention that to them, that oh, don't, don't go, don't do that, especially after uh, more sensitive uh, surgeries. Another thing which we also, I mean, this is related to upper lid, lower lid, brow, face, everything else, we age. So patients come and look at this. This is a very beautiful uh, clip that, um, I don't know where is it, but look at the, you know, we age, okay? So you have done a beautiful surgery today in two years time, the same problem may come back, okay? This is, so, so we need to, to know, to understand, patients should understand this one. Another thing is a proportion, okay? It's a proportion, which is very important again. Um, so many people think I look good, which I don't know how. <laughs> so, so look at, look at, look at, I mean, there's brow lid surgery, upper lid bleph, lower lid bleph, and, and possibly Botox, possibly filler, and so on. Let's go to the complications. I think one of the, uh, one of the, one of the issues which are uncovered after ptosis surgery or unnoticed is ptosis. Look at the left uh, ptosis, minimal ptosis after the, after the blepharoplasty, upper lid blepharoplasty. And uh, this is, you know, again, you know, if you look at the left, the right upper lid a bit higher than the left and you lift the left upper lid, this one will droop, you know, very important. Uh, uh, on, 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 let's say in patients like this, I always do spinephrine test, and then I'll do, I do as well uh, tosis surgery, either anterior or conjunctival approach uh, to, 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 so, you know, you do blepharoplasty in that patient, she won't be happy, the eyelids will be down. Okay, another thing is the lateral hooding, which, you know, again, initially, in the textbook, you don't go beyond the orbital, lateral orbital uh, rim, but, you know, you can go easily and remove that hooding. You know, it's very important. Look at this post-op to the left, to the left side, this is post-op, and you can see that. You have to go back and remove that later on if the patient, you know, is unhappy. So another thing is that the medial, you know, unnoticed medial uh, fat prolapse. Um, you know, uh, there are two, two main scenarios. If it's a lot of fat, you go and excise it, as Dr. Uh, 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 Allen showed, and if it is, uh, a very little bit hollow circle, you go and transpose that fat uh, to the uh, um, uh, uh, laterally. It's very simple, you isolate it, gently dissect it, and then uh, suture it, uh, uh, and then suture it to the orbicularis, okay? Suture it to the orbicularis, and it gives you a bit of beautiful uh, fullness. It doesn't cause any problems, and uh, it's, 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 I, I, li I like this operation uh, very much. So, um, I mean, if it is too much, then you have no other option but to go and, and, and remove it, or either at the first settings or uh, later on if it is, uh, if it is. So this was shown, so I'm not going to go uh, through it. Uh, there are different ways of doing the same operation, either by scissors, or by, 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 by monopolar, um, you know, blunt uh, dissection or, uh, or, uh, or, um, sharp dissection scissors, but if it is there, you can dissect it gently, and this is how I do it, really. Dissect it with, uh, with uh, 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 bluntly, and then I always clamp, so regardless of, you know, I always, always do that, you know. 
and then remove that. Another thing which, again, uh, which we, we uh, often miss, actually, I, I often, I, I look now intentionally for every single patient, is the lacrimal gland prolapse, okay? Even if they are not prolapsed, then, um, uh, you know, this is post-op, uh, if they are not fully prolapsed, during the operation, I prolapse them and I put them back. So they, they get excellent results. Uh, uh, that, that hollowness laterally is, looks a beautiful. So this is the lacrimal gland, okay, and, and you see in the other video, then I, I grasp it, five vitril, and then I, uh, the assistant push, pushes the lacrimal gland, the, the palpebral part down, and then you suture it to the orbital, uh, to the periosteum, it must be periosteum, and it keeps it there with excellent results. Now, brow toes is very well discussed by Dr. Uh, Allen and other colleagues. So if you do a blepharoplasty in this case, that eyebrow is going to cover the eye. So you have to do a brow, brow toes surgery in this lady uh, as well as, look at this, look at this, um, uh, look at the brow in the left, in, in the left picture, right, in the right, another picture, and so on. So you have to do that, you know. And in general, I'm not going to show this one because it was shown, we, you can do direct brow plasty, I mean, the, the internal brow, which was shown, internal brow plasty, direct brow plasty, which gives, the, which gives excellent results, really. And then you do pretracheal uh, brow plasty, and, and the, one of my favorite ones, it works beautifully well. And then endoscopic brow plasty as well in certain uh, specific cases. Uh, uh, um, with its own indications. So, so if you don't do br uh, brow plastic with this case, they may be, they often they are unhappy, so you have to do that. Another thing you have to be, to be careful of is the prolonged edema uh, and hematoma after the operation, and this is because of many factors, microvascular problems with the patients. Uh, longer standing diabetes, heavy smokers, um, uh, unhealthy food and so on. And you know, it takes ages, many months for this. It, it, this creates unhappy patients. Infection and keloid formation, it can be common, if you, especially if you use vitril and absorbable sutures. Uh, so I often put them on oral antibiotics as well as oral steroids for a short period of time, but they do very, very well. And um, granuloma formation can be, uh, look at this patient, uh, he had uh, granuloma from the right. This granuloma came four or five months after the operation, and here he is. Actually, when I removed the granuloma, I also tucked in his uh, lacrimal gland as well, and he was happy. I think we did a small internal brow fixation with him as well at the same time. Excessive fat excision, as I, I, I you know, try to be very, very, very conservative with the fat excisions as you know, we generally don't remove them unless needed for the upper lid. And uh, excessive skin excision is, uh, is another problem which can, you, you, you end up with the, with the, with the upper lid uh, retraction, lack of thalamus, exposure keratopathy, and I personally think excision of the uh, orbicularis is, I, I, I rarely do it, uh, except laterally, laterally, I remove it, but centrally and medially, I don't remove it. So, you know, this is what, uh, one example. Who, uh, me, uh, and, and the treatment, treatment for, the, for that is very difficult, you know. We can discuss this later on with the panel about the upper lid. Uh, if you remove excess skin, uh, wh what would you do? Uh, uh, this was discussed, beautiful photos of Dr. Allen. Uh, you know, web formation medially, if you go too medially or incisions, too many stitches there, eventually you'll get that one. And uh, these are some of them, and I'm, I just ran out uh, by a couple of minutes, se seconds. Take, uh, thank you very much again uh, for your attendance, and it was a bit pleasure to serve you. Again, uh, if you want to get updates about Adore, uh, send me a WhatsApp on this number, and I promise I don't send anything uh, only about Adore, and please don't send me anything only about Adore. Thank you very much. <laughs>